Hello everyone, today I am again back with a new topic of biology which is animal tissues. Let's start. First we will start with what is epithelial tissues? What are the characteristics of epithelial tissue? It is the simplest tissue of all the kinds of tissue. It forms a protective covering. That means uh, it, will, it will be acting as a protective covering in the entire layer of your skin as a continuous sheet. It is closely packed which means that there are no intercellular spaces between two cells and it forms a barrier. All epithelium are separated from a membrane and the location where they are present is skin. In the thin lining of your mouth, in every blood vessels, we have two blood vessels. They are uh, veins and arteries. So veins and arteries, they have a membrane made up of epithelial tissue. They are present in lung alveoli and kidney tubules. There are proximal convoluted tubule PCT of your kidney specifically is made up of epithelial tissue. Besides that, even distal convoluted tubule DCT is made up of epithelial tissue only. But to mention, you can say kidney tubules. So these are the characteristics of epithelial tissue. Now let's move forward to what are the functions of epithelial tissue. Epithelial tissue will protect the underlying cells from drying or from any injury or from chemical effect. Drying which means that in case if you are drinking less water, uh, the epithelial tissue will help from drying it or when you have got a cut or an injury. In that case, it is going to act as a protective cover and chemical effects. Here the chemical effects are mostly the HCL which is hydrochloric acid which is produced in your stomach. So, who is going to protect the layers of the alimentary canal or your stomach specifically? It is the epithelial tissue which is going to protect you from that harsh HCL. HCL is normally acidic in nature. It is an acid. So, that is why in case if it is produced in higher amounts, uh, it is dangerous to the walls or wall layer of your stomach. So, in that case, epithelial tissue will help. So that is what it's going to form a lining of your mouth or elementary canal. It is going to also help in the absorption of water and nutrients and is going to eliminate water. And also if you want to do the diffusion of oxygen and carbon dioxide between blood and alveolar sac. So this diffusion of gas between blood and alveolar sac mostly happens in the uh, lung membrane. That is the alveolar membrane. So this function, the last function is concerned with the lungs. So these are the mostly important points and functions of epithelial tissue. So in this figure you can see uh, one uh, a part which is present in our lungs that is you can the circles are called the alveoli which you can see a sac like thing they are alveoli and who is going to cover the membrane of alveoli it is this epithelial tissue which is going to cover the alveolar membrane and uh, will also help in the diffusion of blood and alveolar sac so in this particular area that diffusion of gases between diffusion of gases and blood happens in this particular area of lungs now we have uh, covered what is the basic of epithelium now we will check out what are the different types of epithelium that is simple squamous the first one a normal single layer very thin no intercellular spaces in that also the second thing is cuboral epithelium columnar epithelium and further we can say that um, this cuboral epithelium can also be said stratified stratified cuboidal when you see more than one layer that is called stratified and the squamous epithelium the simple squamous is also called stratified squamous when you see more than one layer so the stacks of layer together they are called stratified squamous and in simple columnar there is only one layer of uh, long uh, elongated cells 
but in pseudo stratified columnar you will see various layers of uh, columnar layer cells transition epithelium is we will be discussing what is the function of transition epithelium but in grade 9 we don't have that much in common to know about that but in higher classes we have a detailed uh, paragraph on what is transitional epithelium so the classification epithelial tissue they are classified in simple squamous stratified squamous columnar epithelium ciliated epithelium ciliated columnar cuboidal epithelium and glandular epithelium we'll be discussing about why they are called ciliated epithelium in in the further slides i'll be discussing why they are called ciliated why they are called simple columnar why they are called ciliated columnar why they are called a uh, simple squamous and why they are called stratified squamous okay simple squamous epithelium means only one single thin layer of epithelium is called simple squamous epithelium they are extremely thin they are flat cells which means that there is no thickness in those cells they are very thin and flat cells and they have delicate lining of course we have discussed it earlier also this type of simple squamous epithelium is present in the lining of blood vessels we have two common blood vessels arteries and veins and even in lung alveoli this is this is the figure of lung alveoli where the diffusion of blood and gases also takes place this is the structure of simple squamous epithelium you can see there are flat cells there are no intercellular spaces these cells do have nuclei and cell membrane of course and they are present in the alveoli and blood vessels now we'll be discussing what is stratified squamous epithelium which is the second uh, second kind of epi epithelium we say it's stratified squamous when there are more than one layer so we were saying it's simple squamous because it was only one layer of cells flat and thin we say it's stratified squamous because they are arranged in different layers and uh, which means that they will be thick according to how many layers are present and they are going to prevent wear and tear and will protect the organs so who is going to perform the function of protection it is the stratified squamous epithelium and they are present in the esophagus here instead of esophagus we can also write food pipe because esophagus is termed as food pipe in lower classes and even in the lining of mouth and skin the stratified squamous epithelium is present so in case if you if your teacher have suggested you to draw a diagram of stratified squamous you can draw this diagram for of course um one thing you can add on is that you can add on the nuclei you can label nuclei in this any any nuclei you can name it as an extra point in your labeling so this is stratified squamous they are arranged in more than one layer okay the third kind of epithelium is the columnar epithelium columnar epithelium they are very tall tall cells they are like pillars so that is why we say that they are tall cells and they are pillar like and because they are very tall elongated and all very tall and in in kind of altitude we say it they have elongated nuclei and they are present in the inner lining of intestines that is either it is a small intestine or large intestine they are present in both the intestine and their main function is not protection not the protection of organs not the protection of any other thing or helping in diffusion and all they are helping only in absorption and secretion absorption of certain nutrients and substances and the secretion of acids or mucus all this function columnar epithelium will take place and they are going to act as a movement across the epithelial barrier these are the most important points which you should mention in your test paper regarding columnar epithelium along with that you can also draw the diagram of columnar epithelium this is the this is the diagram of columnar epithelium it's a simple diagram so 
so this particular thing this small small lines which you can see like this way they are microvilli and the longer lines they are called cilii this is cilii and this is microvilli and in case if you want to only draw columnar epithelium is mentioned then you can draw only this much with these elongated nuclei this is you can mention they are elongated nuclei so when they have only mentioned to draw columnar epithelium you will be only drawing this particular diagram in further i will say you for ciliated epithelium we have to draw cilii and also microvilli you can draw if they are saying you to uh, draw ciliated columnar epithelium so for simple columnar epithelium this the diagram which i have drawn you have to draw and in case if they are asking ciliated columnar epithelium out of this to any diagram you can draw either showing cilii or microvilli but it is better to draw the diagram which is showing cilii for ciliated columnar epithelium only okay this is ciliated columnar epithelium this is what ciliated columnar epithelium means it is a columnar epithelium which are having cilii on their surface you can see on their surface long cilii i draw so they are hair like projections these hair like projections they are called cilii these hair like projections they are called cilii and the importance of cilia is they will help in the movement of substances specifically they will help in the movement of mucus mucus in your alimentary canal mucus in your mouth Mu they will also help in the movement of your ova from the fallopian tube so ciliated columnar epithelium they will help in the movement or push of mucus forward and the main location where ciliary columnar epithelium is present is in the respiratory tract respiratory tract contains your uh, trachea your larynx and the lungs so this is the location where ciliary columnar epithelium is present here you can see there is trachea there is trachea there is bronchus there is lungs yes and when you are microscopically taking these nerve like structure and seeing under microscope you can see that this is a alveolar sac in this alveolar sac the exchange between gases and uh, blood takes place now the fifth kind of epithelium is cuboidal epithelium the word itself says that the cells are arranged in cube like shapes and they are present in the lining of kidney tubules again i am repeating there are two types of tubules distal convoluted tubule and proximal convoluted tubule and the ducts of salivary gland there are many ducts present in our right side uh, of our face and in the left side of the face below the cheek or below your mouth there the ducts are present so in the lining of kidney tubules and the ducts the cuboidal epithelium are present the main function is not absorption not secretion not protection Cuboidal epithelium is the next epithelium. The name itself says that they have cube-shaped cells, and they are present in the lining of kidney tubules. There are two types of kidney tubules: proximal convoluted tubule and distal convoluted tubule. And uh, more about PCT and DCT, you will be learning in grade twelve if you are opting for biology. And they are also present in the ducts of salivary gland. salivary gland the ducts they are present below your chin area below the cheek inside your mouth the ducts are present they are actually the ducts which are going to secrete out saliva from your mouth they are going to provide mechanical support absorption excretion and secretion excretion 
in the case of ducts of salivary gland the excretion of saliva and secretion they can do the secretion of uh, salts and they can do the secretion of secretion of ions this particular structure you can see is the simple cuboidal epithelium this is simple cuboidal epithelium and this is stratified again like squamous and columnar epithelium the word stratis stratified we use when there is more than one when you have to represent more than one layer or two layer you will be strat saying sat stratified and when we will be having one layer you are saying only it's simple cuboidal and these are some of the examples where the cuboidal epithelium is present this is kidney and here here there are kidney tubules so when you see it a microscopic structure this is a renal tubule and uh, these two this is a collecting duct collecting duct and these two they are proximal and distal convoluted tubule and again this is a salivary salivary gland component so there are various ducts over here like intercalated ducts, stereated duct. From all these things saliva is going to secrete and sometimes even mucus will also secrete from them. Now we are discussing about glandular epitheliums. Glandular epithelium is sometimes the epithelial cells they will acquire additional specialization as a gland cell. Gland is normally a substance which is going to secrete hormone and certain enzymes. So, when this uh, in, in your grade 10 or grade 12, you will learn what is glands. Glands are substances which is going to secrete hormones and certain enzymes. So, when some epithelial cells, for example, even a simple epithelium or a squamous epithelium or a columnar or a cuboidal epithelium can get specialized. And when they get specialized means they are getting this additional specialization as gland cells which means that they are going to secrete substances on the epithelial surface. So whenever certain substances are being secreted on the epithelial surface, no matter it is squamous epithelium, cuboidal, columnar or columnar epithelium having cilia or micros, microvilli on them, whenever these epithelial surfaces are having are found to have secretion on them, which that means that that epithelium are said as glandular epithelium they are said as glandular epithelium now the portion of epithelial tissue folds inwards and will form a multicellular gland which is called glandular epithelium so when such secretions are seen in an epithelium surface the tissue will fold inward and will form multicellular gland the main function secretion of enzymes and hormones this is glandular epithelium there is no need to draw any diagram at this time or they are not going to ask anything about it in more brief but you can say the you can write down these points if they have said to mention so we have completed the epithelial tissue now we are heading towards muscular tissue like how we have learned the classification of epithelial tissue even muscular tissue is divided into various parts that is striated unstriated and cardiac the word cardiac itself uh, suggests that we can say the cardiac tissue also has heart tissue not tissue heart muscles cardiac muscles unstriated and striated striated muscles they are also called skeletal and unstriated they are also called as smooth and cardiac muscles are also called as heart muscles so striated or skeletal muscles they are attached to the bone why we are calling the striated muscles as skeletal muscle is because they are attached to the bones which means that they are attached to the bones of your hind limbs fore limbs of any bone they are attached to a bone so that is why they are called skeletal muscles 
and voluntary they are voluntary which means that they are under your control only if you want that muscle to move you will be able to move it's not uh, nothing automatically is going to happen which means that if you want your legs to move it is under your control to move your legs if you want your hands to move it is under your control to move your hands so this shows that it has voluntary nature when you see and see these muscles under microscope you will see alternate light and dark stereations which means that there will be certain dark patches over there some light patches over there so this you can see in striated or skeleton muscles now how do they look what is their structure they are we they are long they are cylindrical in shape they are branched and they are multinucleated which means that they will have more than one nuclei and to discuss the position of nuclei nuclei is present in the peripheral position where they are present against again we know that they are skeleton muscles means they will be present in the muscles of limbs face neck hind limb forelimb anything like that and most important to mention is that they are voluntary about how they look under microscope where are they present and what is their structure cylindrical branched and multinucleated this is how a skeleton muscle will look and it is also important to draw this they are multinucleated to specifically mention you can write multinucleated and this are the striations the thick ones these these are the dark striations and these thin horizontal lines you can see the thin horizontal lines they are light variations now we'll be heading towards what are unstriated or smooth muscles now why we say them smooth muscles or unstriated there is a reason for that also unstriated muscles because when we look them under the microscope there are no striations there are no light and dark striations how we used to see in skeleton muscles and they are smooth muscles because they are involuntary they are involuntary because they are not in our under our control that means uh, they are present in the iris of eye for example iris of eye the movement of your eyelids or how the how the mucus should move in your elementary canal how the foot should move in your elementary canal these all things are not happen they are not happening according to your control they are involuntary they are not under your control that uh, how is the movement of iris of eye or the uterus and the bronchi they are present in uterus and the bronchi how the uh, exchange of gases takes place they are not under your control hence they are said involuntary they are going to control the movement of food in the canal and the contraction of vessels to say about the structure they are long and pointed so whenever you see a long and pointed end structure that is a structure of a smooth muscle and they are not multinucleated like uh, skeleton muscles they have only one nucleus long and pointed they are smooth muscle fibers or unstriated muscles so this is the iris of eye how the contraction and extract uh, the contraction of pupil should take place how your iris should uh, enlarge and contract that all things are not under your control so that is what we are i just took up a picture for explaining that let me give you an example to understand cardiac muscles or heart muscles even more well so we say that they are going to show the rhythmic contraction and relaxation throughout the life so sometimes most of the heart failures or heart attacks they normally occur it is because of a damage or a cloth in your cardiac muscles or the heart muscles of your heart so whenever they ask a reason at this stage you can say that why there is a heart attack or heart failure in old people it is normally because of a cloth or a damage in your cardiac muscle and this figure is 
you can draw with labeling now so far we have discussed about epithelial tissues characteristics its classification and individual function and their particular diagrams then we have learned about muscle tissue three types of muscle tissue their functions how they look and their diagrams now we are going to learn about nervous tissue nervous tissue present means it is related to your brain spinal cords or nerves characteristics of nervous tissue it is going to comprise of your brain they are present in your spinal cord they are present in your nerves nerves of this tissue they are called as neuron and the neuron can also be said as a nerve cell there are many people who get confused between nerve cell and neuron they mean exactly the same either you can say it as neuron or you can say it as nerve cell and they are highly specialized for stimulation stimulation means whenever we want to send any message directly to our brain it is because of your nerve cell or neuron that your brain uh, takes it well and you know what's happening for example there you pluck a rose and the thorn hits you now it is because of the neuron or nerve cells present there that the message directly goes to your brain and spinal cord and you are able to uh, know that there is a hurt in your finger so this is how this is what the stimulation mean and yes they are transporting stimulus from one point to another and the signal that is going to pass all along the nerve fiber is called as nerve impulse now we will see what are the functions of nervous tissue it is going to control the body the dendrites will carry impulse from your cytin to the cell body and axon will carry impulse away from the cell body and they are highly specialized of course to transport the stimulus for stimulation nervous tissue is important now all this dendrites then axon dendrites axon they all uh they are present in a neuron now we will be seeing what is the structure of a neuron neuron or nerve fiber they have three parts there is a cytin cytin is also called cell body dendrites and the axon cytin has a large central nucleus cytoplasm through which long hair like parts arise these long hair like parts they are called dendrites short branch like fibers arising from the cell body they are called dendrites and the thing which has the nucleus and the cytoplasm this you can mark it mark it as cytoplasm and this particular thing is a nucleus so the nucleus and the cytoplasm they are called as cell body cell body is also called as cyton cell body is also called as cyton now arising from this cell body arising from the cell body is the axon axon is a long tube like structure and the message is pass pass from the axon to this particular axon terminal axon terminal or nerve ending so the message will uh, start from the dendrite and will end at the axon terminal again in connection with this axon terminal there is one more neuron over here like this way with its dendrites and that is how the system will go from one neuron to the second neuron so the message will start from this dendrite everywhere and will reach to the nerve ending nerve ending will be in contact with small fibers called dendrites and will go to the second neuron again the nerve ending or axon terminal of second neuron will be in contact with the third neuron and like that way the messages will reach uh, from one dendrite Uh, the dendrite of one neuron to the dendrite of the second, third, and fourth, 
and then like that way the connection and the stimulus will reach the brain now we will start with what are the functions of connective tissue the word connective tissue itself brings a point in your mind that it is going to the function would be of connection so yes it is special to connect various body organs it is going to connect bone to bone muscle to bus muscle and will bind a tissue which means that connective tissues main function is to provide support it is living it is loosely packed and it is embedded in an intercellular matrix intercellular matrix means between two cells there will be a fluid and that fluid is called as matrix to specifically mention that fluid is jelly like and it is dense or it may be rigid or it may be fluidity based upon where that what that particular organ is the nature of matrix yes it is going to differ with the function of tissue based on what function that particular tissue has to provide the matrix will differ it can either be jelly like it can be dense it can be rigid or hard or it can be fluid we are doing the classification of connective tissues based upon how the matrix is whether the matrix is rigid it is fluid or it is more rigid less rigid based on that connective tissues can be divided into various types of tissues like areolar adipose tendon and furthermore so if the matrix is less rigid now first of all again matrix is uh, a uh, fluid it can be dense it can be jelly like present between the intercellular cells so we are talking about that matrix which is present or embedded in intercellular uh, cells yes so if the matrix is less less rigid we are first talking about areolar tissue areolar tissue is present between your epidermis the outer layer of your skin is called epidermis after your skin epidermis now between your skin and muscles areolar tissue will be present which means that it is going to be present around your blood vessels your veins and uh, arteries and nerves and even the bone marrow and it is going to fill the space inside your organs and the main function which it will carry is repairing tissues the second type of connective tissue which we are classifying based upon the matrix if the matrix is less rigid which means that it is neither fluid it is neither rigid it is in a moderate category we are saying the second adipose tissue it is present between the skin and internal organs and normally the function of adipose tissue is to store fat all the excess fat which you are eating and if it is if the entire fat is not being absorbed and is not being used up the body will send that excess fat to your to the sites of adipose tissue all those excess or unwanted fat which is not used will be stored in adipose tissue that is why it is called as a fat storing tissue and the cells of the adipose tissue they are called adipocytes here you can see this is an adipose tissue you can see the yellow color is actually the unwanted or the fat which is present in excess amount it has came to this location to be stored and this white adipose cells they are actually the adipocytes the cells of adipose tissue they are called adipocytes nothing but they are large vacuoles and inside those vacuoles you can see this yellow color stored fat in it so we can say that uh, it is a filling tissue it is going to fill the fat and it is going to also act as an insulator which is going to keep the body warm okay so it is present between your skin and internal organs the third kind of tissue based upon the matrix is less rigid is tendon tendon is going to connect your bone to muscle any bone you can see in your body it will be connected with a muscle it is non elastic and it is a fibrous tissue fibrous tissue is tough and it cannot break easily it is less flexible 
and matrix is composed of white collagen fibers there are various type of collagen fibers but tendon has a matrix of course which is less rigid less rigid means less flexible it is a fibrous tissue and it the matrix is composed of white collagen fibers now the fourth type of connective tissue based upon the fluid the matrix is less rigid is ligament the ligament will connect bones to bones one bone connected to another bone for example the bones present in your inner ear malleus incus and stapes all these three bones they are present in series so how they are connected they are able to connect because of ligaments the malleus is in contact with stapes stapes is in contact with incus so how these bones are arranged in a series pattern it is because of ligament it is very elastic and it has considerable strength very little matrix and in this case it is made up of yellow elastin fibers and normal movement is possible ligament means normal movement is possible it is not that tough as a tendon now the second classification of connective tissue is based on rigid matrix rigid matrix means we can think about a bone cartilage bone is very strong it is non flexible tissue bone is actually a very strong tissue and it is going to provide a framework to your body and bone cells they are called osteocytes and inside that osteocytes this rigid matrix is present now what this matrix is made up of of course this uh the matrix is composed it has calcium in it the matrix has phosphorus compounds in it like calcium phosphate calcium phosphite like this type of uh, organic uh, compounds are present in it and it is due to the presence of these compounds of calcium and phosphorus that bones are hard so in give reason question they can ask what is the main reason behind the bones being hard so you can say an introductory sentence was that bones are very strong and non flexible tissue going to provide a framework to your uh, body the main reason behind the bones being hard because the matrix embedded in the bone cells or osteocytes has calcium and phosphorus compounds in it and it is due to this reason that the bones are hard the symbol for calcium is ca and the symbol for phosphorus is p due to this bones are hard now the second type of tissue is cartilage cartilage is not that much strong like bone it is a flexible tissue now in this case matrix is not made up of calcium and it's not made up of calcium and phosphorus which means that it is not that much hard the matrix of cartilage is made up of protein and sugar it is important point to write during your exam all these points cannot be skipped actually anything anything i have mentioned in this presentation should not be skipped during your exam because all points are important the location where cartilage is present we know the nose bone it is not that tough as a bone it is actually flexible your ear your outer ear also called as pinna is made up of cartilage the trachea is not hard as a bone because it is nothing but cartilage and the larynx larynx also called as voice box is made up of cartilage the main uh, function of cartilage is supporting and gives flexibility to the body parts here you can see the bone anatomy the bone when you are cutting the bone you will see the bone cells they are called osteoclast and in between this osteo actually osteocytes in these osteocytes the matrix will be filled with calcium and phosphorus compounds which makes bone hard now the third classification of connective tissue based upon the matrix if the matrix is fluid and this fluid is nothing but called as plasma so that is blood and lymph blood is a fluid connective tissue and the plasma plasma is actually nothing but rbc wbc and platelets rbc are present in largest amount then wbc and then platelets 
the plasma has proteins salts and hormones so plasma is made up of rbc wbc rbc red blood cells also called erythrocytes wbc white blood cells and platelets plasma is made up of proteins salts like sodium chloride na plus cl minus and certain hormones lymph blood is colorful it is red in color it is because of hemoglobin hemoglobin hb present in them but lymph is colorless there is no hemoglobin pigment present in lymph that is why it is colorless lymph is made up of plasma and wbc its uh, rbc is not present in lymph hemoglobin is absent and the main function of lymph is it will help in exchanging material between a tissue and blood for example you want to do the exchange between your one wall of small intestine to another so that exchange will take place with the help of lymph and most important function is which connective tissue provides a defense to the body it is the lymph which is going to it's the very important component for providing defense system in the body here you can see this is a blood vessel it has so yeah a blood vessel will have a white blood cell it will have plasma here you can see this plasma is a bit yellow in color but of course not red because hemoglobin pigment is not present in it the red color cells they are rbc they are red in color because of the present of hemoglobin pigment in them and these are platelets plates platelets are also very important for the defense mechanism along with plasma okay so we have concluded the entire exp explanation of animal tissue below in the description you will be find you will be finding a detailed flow chart of animal tissue which will be easy for you to remember before your exam and i hope you liked my explanation and if you want explanation on any other subject or biology related topics you can comment down i'll be happy to explain and reach out to you guys thank you